Device ID leverages JavaScript to create a unique tamper-proof identifier that's used to prevent attacks and remove good user friction. This JavaScript collects device identification signals, as you see here, using things like um, JavaScript engine types, browser APIs, browser configurations, and distinctive characteristics of operating systems and hardware. We detect things like uh, how emojis render across different devices. So if you're on an iPhone versus a Samsung, you know, the emoji smiley face is going to render differently. So that's just one of the hundreds of signals that are used in detecting a device. And this is technology that has been developed over the years. Currently, F5Shape processes around 730 billion transactions per year for some of the world's largest organizations in protecting them from attacks and also removing user friction for the good users. So we're able to leverage the same JavaScript as a free service today with uh, device ID. Deployment of device ID is very simple. All developers have to do is add a JavaScript tag to the page and the rest takes care of itself. Once that JavaScript is loaded in the page and users start visiting the site, it will make an asynchronous call out to the device ID plus service where the device ID will be generated. It's uh, in the form of a residue value and attribute value, which we covered in the previous article. From there, when users interact with the site, that device ID value, that payload that was returned will be uh, passed across the wire as, as users interact with the site and it will be processed on the back end. And that's what we're gonna focus on today is how to analyze the data that we received in our demo application. Once device ID is deployed within the application, we now have the ability to run analytics and set up alerts based on this unique identifier. Some of the findings from F5's um, operations and security teams are that one in 1,000 devices access more than three accounts. So uh, you may have um, one device that that'll access more than three accounts, but that would be in the range of, of 1,000 device IDs. One in 10,000 devices access 10 or more accounts. So you may have a situation where you have a super user that's accessing more than 10 accounts. But again, this is a a case by case but somewhat generalized rule of thumb. Um, your application may be different, but that's what we have found uh, so far in our analysis. Malicious users use the same device when trying to mass network location. So in some cases, malicious users will try to commit fraud by using multiple VPN connections into the same uh, environment or into the same application. And in this case, they all had the same device ID, so it was easy to track that, that fraud down for the specific customer. Uh, another rule of thumb is that botnets often use pre-built images like Docker containers that use the same web browser or may have caching disabled or, or something is tweaked so that they're, they're not tracked by traditional mechanisms. But with device IDs, unique ability to track uh, a device even though that the cache is cleared or turned off, that gives us a, a huge advantage to identifying botnets that are either flying under the radar of our current detection system or ones that uh, are just using more advanced techniques that are not visible to us today. Now that we've gone through some of the basics of device ID as a refresh, we're now going to jump into the data we used for uh, the first part of this article series. And you can either go back to and read the part one or you can just follow along here. But basically we're, we've created what's called a fraud profile. And for our demo application, our fraud, fraud profile only includes a few specific data points. Other fraud profiles, they may include a user agent, they may include the IP address, they may include a lot of other data, but for example purposes and for demonstration purposes here, I'm only using a subset of data. Uh, namely, everything starts with the username. After that, you have the device ID residue value, and then after that, you have what's uh, called a reCAPTCHA score because our application before device ID, before we brought device ID into it, we were just using reCAPTCHA to try to defend against bots. So a very traditional use case that a lot of developers face today. And so we're including 
that existing scoring mechanism into our fraud profile to see how well it's working. We're going to use device ID to actually see is it effective and is, re, is reCAPTCHA causing friction for our users and for in our analysis. Uh, a simple timestamp to get when uh, the, the transaction took place. And then the attribute value, which is the unique identifier for the device ID service. It's where that if a user has cleared their browser cache, this device ID attribute value is going to stay the same across user sessions. And finally, as a high level overview for those of you who do not want to go back and read part one, uh, we created a device ID example application. It's around 100 lines of code, very simple Node.js application that uses reCAPTCHA, Google's reCAPTCHA service to try to identify uh, malicious transactions or, or bots. And so we're going to take the data. This, this application has actually been in production for about two or three months now. We're going to take all the login data that, that people have submitted, and we're going to do an analysis on that uh, with our device ID injected into the data. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to really quickly show you how the log is being captured. So in our uh, very simple, this, this is the entire application, around 128 lines, we have this uh, fraud logger here. And it's very simply just writing out to the file system our um, event log of logins. So let's go find it here. So we're basically just creating a JSON object, very much like you would send out to a Kafka topic or some other SIM uh, mess, uh, event system. We're going we're gonna to log that to just a very simple file for uh, demo purposes. So this is our risk profile or our, our fraud profile that we've created in the application. So let's go out and look at that fraud log. So this is from the production system. If you haven't been out to the site yet, it's, it's uh, out at deviceid.dev slash v3. And it's, a, like I said, a very simple login form. You can put anything in, into the input field and it's going to just really just, it's a learning tool on, on how device ID works is all it is. And as you can see here that I've logged in, um, I have a device ID generated for this username. And it also has a reCAPTCHA score of 0.9, which is, is con to Google is considered good and uh, a device ID attribute value. So now if I go in and I go into incognito mode, or if I clear my browser and try to log in again with the same username, I'm gonna have a new device ID because now I'm in incognito mode. But as you can see here, the device ID attribute value remains the same, even though I have a new device ID. So that's that again is the unique identifier of the service that you can change things within your browsing environment and still have a, an identifier that can be used to track fraud um, and help your user base. Now you see the fraud log that was produced by the demo application over the past couple of months. Each one of the lines, uh, each one of the entries is, is a fraud profile as we saw in the previous slide. Um, and, and so that is what we've been logging uh, over each login attempt uh, from our user base. And so what we can do now is perform analysis. On, on the data, and, and this could be in the form of a SQL query, it could be in the form of uh, really anything, but just because this is a very simple JavaScript object uh, and in a, in a structure that we can easily understand, I'm just gonna very quickly write some uh, JavaScript to do an analysis on, on the data itself. So the first function uh, that we're gonna run is, is just a basic user summary, just to see just to get an idea of what the data looks like before we can really um, add any um, uh, useful analytics to, uh, to, to our dashboard here. So we're going to run the user summary. So we're going to do node analytics. I just created a very simple JavaScript file. And this is going to show us all the folks that logged in over the course of this time period. Um, and it shows us the login attempts. So I'm adding just how many times did they try to log in and it gives us uh, how many device IDs were generated for um, this particular user. So if we scroll up, we can see that, uh, you know, of course, this is dummy data. This is folks just typing stuff in and logging in. But 
in a real production system, this would be actual user data and it would mimic that. So this user tried to log in 10 times and all the device IDs are the same. So they're using the same device ID, um, same device to, to do that login. So we can scroll up, we can see more. So here's one that actually has quite a few different device IDs. Uh, yeah, there's a couple that are the same, but um, we, can, we can start to get ideas as to how users interact with our application. Are they sharing their username? and or, or are they just accessing it from a mobile device, uh, desktop, and then maybe something else, right? But it would not be more than three potential device IDs for an individual user account. So that gives us an idea of kind of what folks are doing, how they're logging in and, and all that good stuff. So that's great. Um, next, we're gonna go to understanding what a specific user looks like. So if you just wanna uh, see what this user is doing. You can just find the username. We can see that they tried to log in twice and that they generated two different device IDs, but the attribute value is the same. So this would be where this user had logged in and um, maybe gone into incognito mode for some reason or, or something else, right? But the device ID attribute value does remain the same there. The next one we'll look at users per device ID. So we want to understand when multiple usernames are being used across one device ID, which could be a reuse uh, or potential uh, account takeover situation. So here we have a single user, uh, or I'm sorry, a single device ID that has logged in with multiple user accounts this would be an account takeover attempt, right? Or some type of malicious activity going on in the system. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, dummy data from one of the users interacting with the, with the site, but uh, we're gonna go on and we're gonna look for, okay, so here's another case where um, a single device ID, but has been using quite a few different user accounts, right? They've been logging in quite a few times with multiple user accounts. So this would be an obvious, sign of some type of misuse or abuse of that account um, or those accounts from a single device ID. Now we're going to take a look at the um, scoring system that we previously had implemented within this application, but with device ID layered in to see how well it's working. Here we can see the same user report that we ran before, but now it has the reCAPTCHA score in the results. So we can see that this device ID, who was committing some form of account sharing uh, or account abuse, account takeover action, had a reCAPTCHA score of 0.9 across all of those transactions, which tells us that this existing scoring system did nothing to help us identify the account takeover attempt and, and it, it kind of underlines the strength of what device ID can do for an existing system. Let's scroll up a little bit more and see what we can find. Um, let's go with this one. So here we have an account that has uh, a legitimate username, device ID, everything looked good, but they're getting bad scores. So it's a 0 0.7, negative one, and we don't know what's going on with that user account, but we know that they are facing some type of friction with logging in. And so now we can either disable the scoring system as long as our device ID rules are met and there are no new devices being added to this user account. And we've undergone some type of analysis on the account. We can now remove this friction of, of reCAPTCHA, especially if you're showing um, saw, uh, challenges like find all the traffic lights and find the bicycles and find the crosswalks, right? This user could be spending uh, legitimate dollars on uh, goods within the system. And we are introducing all this friction with our existing technology that we can now remove. So that's just an example of, of again, of what device ID can do for your existing uh, scoring mechanism.
And now that we're on the topic of friction, uh, this gives us the ability to not only have a report on fraud and analytics on fraud and what, what, the, what are the bad things that are happening, but also how can we improve the user experience with device ID. So we also have a very easy analysis, uh, again, up here in the JavaScript. It, it, it's just a very basic query to see when we have a, a score, a, a recapture score that is um, less than zero. So that would be a negative one. So anyone who's using a negative one in this particular application or anyone who generates a negative one is, uh, is basically trying to reuse the same recapture token or having some type of problem logging in. They're, they're hitting the refresh button. So it's only a, a small subset of, of users who are receiving this, this friction experience here. But it, uh, again, it gives us visibility in our analytics to improve the application, to improve and, and ultimately lift revenue um, for uh, especially retail sites and, and sites where users are spending money, we can go in and do this, this friction analysis and, and begin to dig in and, and maybe even remove um, that friction from the user experience. And last but not least, we're going to do a quick look at our user summary again because we saw some data in there that uh, didn't look quite right. And I want to I wanna trace that down. So let's see, I saw an account in here that was yeah, wreaking havoc, and that's right. This, this one account seemed to be doing some damage in the system or just being malicious in some way. And even though it's, you know, I have no other way of, of finding out who this user is or, or, you know, if they're causing any more problems in the system, um, device ID attribute is gonna allow me to, to have that visibility because now, if this user just masked their identity by going into incognito mode or by clearing their cache and, and, and trying to manipulate the system in some other way, I can now correlate the device ID attribute and see what other accounts are associated with the same malicious user. So let's do that uh, as our last exercise. So we're gonna go in here to device ID attribute reuse, and then we're gonna bring up the report we can see here, let's see if wreaking havoc is in the, in the data. Yes, they are. So this same account also uses, uh, or the same user with the same devi uh, device ID attribute also uses another account, uh, JHB. So this allows us to trace things down in a, in a different way that uh, any other system or device ID um, tracking mechanism is, is not going to allow you to do. So that, it, again, is the unique value that device ID uh, brings to the table, and you're able to identify accounts and users that uh, you normally would not be able to identify.